Okay, now we're going to talk about the Nernst equation. Just sounds fun, doesn't it? Um, here we're going to have some non-standard conditions. Instead of always being a one molar solution of an aqueous substance, we're going to change that. So our equation is given to us right here. However, this will be given to you on the test. You do not have to memorize it. So some things that we see here are that we still will have to calculate our voltage at, um, I'm sorry, let me start with this. We will have to calculate our voltage at standard conditions, and then we will come back and calculate our voltage at the non-standard conditions. Some other variables that we need to know are the number of electrons that are transferred in your balanced equation. So in other words, this is the number of electrons that cancel out when we go through that balancing process. And then we have our concentration of our products and our concentration of our reactants, and we are going to raise that to the power of the coefficient in that balanced equation. So again, there's another reason why it's so important for us to be able to balance those equations. Okay, so our first step is to just go through what we've been doing. It says what would be the voltage of a voltaic cell made from zinc metal, one molar zinc ions, silver metal, and one molar silver ions. So notice that everything is at standard conditions here. So we do this just like we've been doing. There's nothing new about this. We are going to say that our two half reactions where we're taking our ions to our metal, so in other words, our two reduction halves, look like this, where we add our two electrons. Um, and then we've got the same thing with our silver ions going to silver, and you add one electron. But we know it's not possible to have two reduction halves. We still go ahead and write them like that so that we can go ahead and figure out from our reduction potential tables what the values are. And this is what we get for our voltage. So that came from our reduction potential tables. Both of these are reduction halves. Not possible to have two reduction halves. One of these has to be flipped. We always flip the more negative or the less positive. So this top one, the zinc, now becomes an oxidation half instead of a reduction half. So it becomes zinc going to zinc ions plus those two electrons. And in the process of doing that, it becomes a Z positive 0.7626. So now we can add those voltages together and we get 1.562 volts. And what we notice here, we're just making a note that our silver is being reduced, our zinc is being oxidized. So that's the first step is being able to get to that point. Um, we could then even take this further because we're going to have to at some point and we're going to have to go ahead and balance it, so let's just do that now. We've got one electron with our silver, we've got two with our zinc. So I'm going to take this whole thing and multiply this by two. But remember, this value stays as is. I didn't have to multiply it by two in order to get my E, my uh, potential for my cell. So now what I'm going to come up with here is two electrons plus two silver ions goes to two silvers. So I guess we could just go ahead and cross this out and um, let's just do that. Let's put our reduction right there and boom, I erased. Um, so those are our two half reactions that we've got. When we add those together, we know that the overall reaction is going to be and I will throw it in right here. We're going to get zinc. We see that these guys, our electrons cancel out, so we're going to have zinc plus our two silver ions, and that goes to our zinc ions plus our two silvers. And I can write a shorthand notation for the cell described above. When we did this the other day, we said you don't have to worry about throwing those coefficients in there. So it's really not that big of a deal to throw the coefficients in. I'm going to leave those out. But what I remember is that this is the long way to do it. This is the overall reaction. Or I can write it the shorthand method. So that just reminds us that we do oxidation first, then reduction. 
So if I look at my oxidation half right here, I see that my oxidation half is the zinc. So I'm going to go from zinc to zinc ions. So it goes zinc slash zinc ions, double slash. And then my reduction half is going to be right here. That's going to be the silver. And I see that my reactants to products for my reduction half is going from silver ions to silver metal. So I'm going to say my Ag plus 1 goes to Ag. So we have just done the shorthand notation. Now it's time to diagram it. So we are going to have our half cells. And inside of those, I'm just going to throw in the metals that we've got. We've got, uh, here, I'll go ahead and hook those up to a voltmeter. We did this calculation earlier, and we saw that the maximum voltage we could get from this combination of metals is 1.562 volts. Now, when I throw in, arbitrarily, I just put a metal on each electrode or label each electrode with a certain metal. This would mean that I have zinc ions in solution here, and I have silver ions in solution here. Of course, this whole thing can't happen without a salt bridge. Now, when I label, and you've got this in front of you as to which reaction is which, we see that the zinc is where oxidation occurs, and um, the uh, silver is where reduction occurs, or silver is being reduced. So in other words, oxidation always occurs at the anode, which is negatively charged, and reduction always occurs at the cathode, which is positively charged. So we can also say something about the flow of electrons. And we know that electrons are always going to, this is what we're remembering, fat cat, they flow from the anode to the cathode. So my anode is over here with my zinc. I'm going to label it saying that my electrons are flowing this way. Again, I would never say that they're flowing from left to right or they're flowing clockwise. I have to say that they're flowing from zinc to silver. It is always going to be that they flow from the anode to the cathode. So you could also answer some other th things about this, but it doesn't ask us to do any of that just to diagram the cell. I guess we should say something about our salt here. We've got a positive ion with our potassium and negative with our nitrates. So what happens here is that your, um, your nitrates are going to go to replenish your anode and this is getting sloppy, your positives are going to replenish your uh, silver. So that's what we get for our diagram. Now the next thing to note when we look at this next one is when we read through our example, it says what would the voltage of a cell made from zinc metal and silver metal and zinc ions and silver ions, well, it's all the same stuff, but notice now that it's a 2 molar solution, and it's a 0.1 molar solution. So our molarities have changed. It's no longer a standard solution. I'm just going to real quickly remind myself, since I've already got this done from a previous page, this was my shorthand notation. And I'm leaving myself a little space. And there's a reason for that. So if you look back at your shorthand notation, you did that earlier. That's how you would write it if it was just the standard conditions. But this is not standard conditions. So you actually have to add more information in here on your shorthand notation. I have to now mention, and I did not leave myself enough space, that it is a 2 molar solution for my, my zinc ions. And it is a... 0.1 molar solution for my silver ions. Hopefully yours looks a little less crammed than that, but we would just go ahead and write those uh, concentrations in for your shorthand method. So now all I'm going to do is apply the Nernst equation. So maybe we should even just jot that down since we don't have that visible on the screen. And that's going to be...
products and reactants. Okay, so there's our equation that would always be given to us. We don't have to have it memorized. And when we go through and try and apply this, we've already done a lot of that hard work now. We've already figured out our standard reduction potential for this cell. That's what we did in the previous uh, example. So now we're just going to solve for our potential at these non-standard conditions. So I'm going to take the 1.562 that I calculated earlier. I'm going to subtract this constant, which is going to be on top of my n. And this is what we said. I'm going to flip back now. That it's important to be able to go through this balancing process. Because now when I look back, I see that there were two electrons. When I balanced this reaction, I had to get it to a point of having two electrons that canceled out. And so by having, I have just lost something here. Oh, there we go. Um, so by getting it to two electrons that cancel out, that becomes my n value. So n equals 2. Multiply it times the log of the concentration of the products. Well, if I look at my shorthand notation, what I have up here in blue, I see that my products, this right here, my zinc ions, that's a product. Zinc metal was a reactant. Zinc ions are a product. So I'm going to have a concentration of 2 molar. So I'm going to take 2 and put that on top. And I am going to raise that to the power of my coefficient. And this is the time that I really wish I had this equation written down in front of me. But if I'm going to look, let's highlight this again. If I look right here, at this overall reaction, I see that my product, as far as solutions go, I've got zinc ions as a product. I've got silver ions as a reactant. So that's another way to look at it is from your balanced overall reaction. So my zinc ions, what's my coefficient? It is just a 1. That's an implied 1. For my silver ions, I see that I've got a 2 as my coefficient. So now we flip forward and we see that this, I'm just going to go ahead and write the 1 just for illustration purposes here. And we know that this is going to be divided by the concentration of my reactants, which again we've already said is going to be our silver ions. And that's a 0 0.1 molar solution. And I raise it to the second power. So when I go through this math, and don't just stop there, make sure you know how to plug this in, and that I'm going to let you take time and do. So the answer that we end up getting here is 1.494 volts. That is the value of the uh, voltage at non-standard conditions.